Today we're going to talk about a subject entitled Stop Not, and say Stop Not, and then Fear Not, and say Fear Not. Fear not. So for the next couple of weeks, this is going to be your battle cry, our battle cry. We're going to keep on saying, we're going to, we're, we're, we're going to stop not, and we're going to fear not, amen. Even when there's a lot of temptation to quit, we're going to say, we're, we're stopping not. We're going to stop not, amen. Even if there's a huge challenge up ahead, where there, where there are big problems in front of you, you're not going to fear. You're going to say, I'm going to fear not. Amen. Our battle cry for the next coming days will be stop not, fear not. And everybody say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, stop not. Stop not. Fear not. Fear not. I'm going to say stop not. Stop not. Fear not. Fear not. Hallelujah. Amen. Today's lesson is a lesson on consistency and courage. We're going to go directly to the Bible, Daniel chapter 6. We're going to learn from this very exceptional young man or very exceptional man named Daniel and we're going to read his story started kicking off um, in verse 1 Daniel chapter 6 verse 1 it says here Darius thought if I say Darius if I say Darius, Darius. Darius. alright so Darius is like the king alright just to give you the context of the verse of the passage Darius was the king so during this time the king's name was Darius uh huh Clear, crystal, clear, uh-huh. So it says here, Darius thought it would be a good idea to choose 120 governors. How many governors? You are so smart today. Hallelujah. All right, 120 governors who would rule his kingdom. Next line. It says here, it says here, he chose three men as super, supervisors. 120 governors and three supervisors. Supervisors. You know, you supervise like advisors with a cake, yeah? And they become supervisors, you know, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you're like Superman is like a man with a cape and he becomes Superman. So, so supervisors are like visors with cakes, so they become supervisors. <laughs> supervisors over those governors and Daniel was one of the super supervisors the supervisors were to ensure that the governors did not try to cheat the king hallelujah next one Daniel showed Daniel showed that he 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 could do the work better oh I like the word better when you say better it means better hallelujah <laughs> When you say better, it's like you're like you're like a cup above the rest. It's like everybody's like uh, doing it like uh, say uh, 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 this level, and, and when you say you're better, you're you're doing it more. And, and it says here, Daniel was doing it better. The, the work was better when it was done by David. Uh, Daniel, sorry. And it says here, <laughs> so the king planned to put Daniel in charge of the whole kingdom. Because of this, the other supervisors. And governors tried to find reasons to accuse Daniel about his work. So they got jealous. Everybody say jealous. So they got jealous and they formed an association of the jealous people. OJP. Or AJP. Association of the jealous people. Alright, so they came up with this organization because they were trying to destroy the reputation of Daniel because Daniel was about to be to become in charge of everything. And they didn't like it. They hated it. So they came together, converge, and actually came up with a uh, 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 with a plan to destroy the reputation of Daniel. And it says here, but they could not find anything wrong with him. Just like your neighbor right now, hallelujah, just like the person next to you. Aww. You didn't find anything wrong. Aww. And it says here, they couldn't find anything wrong with him or any reason to accuse him because he was trustworthy. Trustworthy, he could be trusted. Uh-huh. Uh, not lazy. Oh, very much like you. Not lazy. Hallelujah. Or dishonest. Finally, this man said, we will never find any reason to accuse Daniel unless it is about the law of his God. Now, you got to understand, during this time, Daniel was, uh, was uh, an Israelite. And because of the Babylonian captivity, they were brought to a nation which did not honor the same God or the God that he worshipped. So Daniel was worshipping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the same God that we worship. And the people in that country were not worshipping that same God. And so they, 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 they came up with a plan, you know. They couldn't find anything wrong with Daniel. So they said, they assumed that they will, find, they will not find any reason to accuse him unless it is about the law of his God. Are you getting this? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. 
Verse 6, so the super supervisors and governors went as a group to the king and said, King Darius, live forever. The supervisor, supervisors, assistant governors, governors, the people who advise you, and the captains of the soldiers have all agreed that you should make a new law. New law for everyone to obey. For the next 30 days, no one should pray to any god or human except to you, O king. Anyone who doesn't obey will be thrown into the lion's den. Uh -huh. Do you know the meaning of lion's den? It is the den where lions are. <laughs> so it's kind of clear, y'all. So anyone who worships another god or another person except except king, ex 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 uh, who bows to any god or any person except to King Darius will be thrown to the lion's den. So that's the law. Amen. Now, oh, oh. The supervisor said, yeah, for the next 30 days, no one should pray to any god or human except to you, O king. Anyone who doesn't obey will be thrown into lion's den. Now, O king, make the law and sign your name to it so that it cannot be changed, because then it will be a law of the Medes and Persians and cannot be canceled. Verse 9, so King Darius signed the law. So that was the law. It was now illegal to worship or bow down to any human or any god other than King Darius. It was now a law. Let's see what happens next. Let's see what Daniel does. Verse 10. It says here, powerful. We're going to kick off from this. Even though Daniel knew that the new law had been written, he went to pray. He went what? Pray. What did he do? Pray. I mean, did, you, did I hear you say pray? I mean, huh? Did I hear you say, did I hear you say, did I hear you say, pray? Oh, let the book pray? I mean, I thought it was illegal. There was a law, right? Uh-huh. There was a law. It's been passed. It's been approved. There is a law. It's illegal. But the Bible tells us that Daniel, even though he knew that the new law had been written, he went to pray in an upstairs room in his house, which had windows that opened toward Jerusalem. All the windows were open. And he was praying and thanking God. And he was saying, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm not going to stop praising. I'm not going to stop worshiping. Even if there's a law, even if there's a lion's death, I'm not going to stop praising. Because he was praising God. Because he was doing it for God. And he was not afraid to fight for what he believed in. He was not afraid to fight for God. Amen. Amen. Woo, this is Daniel. And be you today, man. And it says here, Daniel would kneel down to pray and thank God just as he always had done. How many times? Three times, three times, three times. No fear, no stopping. No fear, no stopping. No fear, no stopping. There was no fear and there was no stopping Daniel. He kept on keeping on. Even if there's reason to, to be afraid. Even if, even if there was reason to stop. I mean, people were against it. There was a law. But he knew he was doing it for God. Amen. Amen. I call this super faith. I call this super, super consistency. I call this extraordinary. I call this exceptional. He was desperate for God and nothing was going to stop him. No rule, no person, nothing was ever going to stop him from honoring God. About say, Amen. Two things we learn from Daniel. Number one, consistency. About say consistency. Consistency, consistency is when you go out from God, for God, from, from day one, to the end, first day to the end, you're gonna go all out. Amen. Consistency is, is choosing to love God no matter what. Consistency is always giving it your best shot all the time. Consistency is not based on your feelings or your emotions. Consistency is based on a choice that you make every day to honor God no matter what. Even if you're alone, even if there's no one following you, even if there are people who are like hating you or laughing at you, you will continue to honor God. It's called consistency. And even if others stop, and even if others quit, it's called consistency. When you just keep on keeping on by yourself, you're going to do it because you know that you're doing it for God, not for any other person. You're doing it for God. It's called consistency. <laughs> giving it your best shot all the time. Giving it your all all the time. And everybody say amen. amen. It's called consistency. Amen. amen. I'm not angry. <laughs> I'm just trying to hammer it on a point. Amen. I believe that God is raising up a generation. A generation of, of 
people, believers who are willing to fight for their faith. Who are willing to fight for God's cause, to fight for God. And that is you. Amen. Yeah. And even when it's too difficult to raise your hands, you're going to raise your hands for God. Even when it's difficult to bring your Bible at school, because you know that some people will mock you or laugh at you, you will bring your Bible. You will read your Bible. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Consistency means doing it, giving it your best shot when you feel like you don't want to. Consistency means doing it even when you're not feeling perfect. Oh, Pastor, I can't raise your hand. I can't raise my hands right now. I can't dance. I'm sorry, Pastor. I can't sing, Pastor, because I don't feel well. Hey, hey, hey. Consistency is not based on your feelings. In fact, consistency is not, it's not about your feelings. It's about God. Amen. When you understand that everything that we do here and everything that you do in your life, when you just honor God, it's not about you. It's not about your feelings. It's about God. Amen. And how many of you know that God deserves the best? Amen. When you believe that God deserves the best, you will give God your best no matter what. Even when you're sick. Even, you know, if you're, if you're called to be a dancer, how many of you believe you're called to be a dancer for God? Yeah. Only one. Hallelujah. How many of you know that God has given you talents? God has given you your legs, your feet to jump and praise God. Say amen. Yeah. How many of you believe that God has given you a voice to sing and cry out to God? Amen. Yeah. You know, this is, our, this is our purpose, to worship God and honor Him. Amen. And how many of you are willing to fight for that cause? How many of you are willing to fight for your calling? Amen. Now even if you don't, you don't feel like it, even if you feel tired and weak, and, and you just have to keep on keeping on. Because you know it's for God. Amen. If you're a life group leader, you're going to continue to lead your life group. Even if they were cut off from 12, now they're only one. You're going to continue. You're going to be faithful to your calling. You're going to study the word. Prepare hard. Pray hard. Fast if you have to. You will keep on keeping on because you know you're doing it for God. Yeah. It's called consistency. Amen. Yeah. You're going to do all you can. Amen. Done are the days when when we are so in inconsistent when, when it comes to our faith. This year, how about you have a goal? No absences. No excuses. Every Saturday you will be here and you will worship God in the youth gig. Amen. Every week you will attend your life with no absences, no excuses. Why? Because you want to be consistent and you're doing it for God. Everybody say amen. amen. Consistency is a choice. Not just, yeah, not just a feeling based on emotions. Consistency is when you hold on to what you are supposed to do even when it's difficult. Christian, consistency is doing what is right even when others laugh at you. And everybody say amen. amen. You may have experienced it before. You went to a restaurant and everybody of your friends, they all ordered beer. And you were there, you were like staring at them. You're a Christian. You want to honor God. You know it, it's, it's, it's not so good to drink alcohol and drink. So, so, so when everybody else is like ordering beer, you order, you go for bookages. And then they say, yeah, and you're like, you're so cheap, look at you. No, but it's okay. Uh-huh. It's okay. Amen. Even if they mock you, even if they, if they laugh at you, it's okay. You know why? Because at the end of the day, you realize that the most important audience is not the audience of your friend. It is the audience of one, and his name is God. Otherwise, we can able to please him. And that is what matters most. And about to amen. So even when others mock you or laugh at you or stare at you like though you're weird or like an alien, you're going to continue doing what you're doing for God. Amen. Because you're doing it for Him. And He is all worth your all. He's worth it. Everybody say amen. amen. How about this courage? Daniel had courage. He was consistent and he was courageous. Everybody say amen. amen. Now courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is actually doing something with fear. Even if there's fear, you're going to continue to do it. Amen. That's courage. You are overcoming fear. This doesn't mean that there's no fear. There must be fear, but he was overcoming fear. That's why he's called courageous. And I was like, amen. amen. How many of you know that in terms of faith, in terms of our relationship with God, we need to be courageous. We have to take risks for God. We got to go all out for God. We got to take risks and, and step out of the boat and, and just make steps of faith for God. We have to be courageous. And I said, amen. amen. Courage is fighting for your faith, even to the point of death. Courage is fighting for God even when there's fear. Christian courage is saying, God is worth my all. 
Christian courage is believing God will be with me. It's called courage. Everybody say amen. You know, yesterday I was so blessed. We actually had this wonderful experience. We went to a school named uh, Philippine Science High School. Yeah, Philippine Science High School. So these are like uh, some of the most intelligent people in the whole world. Because it's Philippine Science High School. In po yung Central Luzon campus and they had it in, in Clark. And uh, you know that we have some people who are actually attending wildfire who go to, who go to Philippine Science High School? Oh, sila na. <laughs> you know, you have to be super smart to be able to get into that school. So, anyway, there was this young man named Jeremy. For a long weeks, I texted him and said, Pastor, Pastor, you need to go to our school. And he said, okay, what do I do to your uh, sa school? Mo? And he said, you know, you can preach, you, 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 you can share Jesus. And he said, I want, I want, I'm going to gather all, my, all, my, all the students in the class, or all the students in the school, and I want you to be there. And I said, really? Gather all the students in the school? You can do that? Yeah. Why? How old are you? Uh, 15. Oh. So, you have to understand where I'm coming from. Usually, when I go to a school, or like by it's the principal, it's the owner of the school, or it's the guidance counselor, or whatever. But this time, there was this 15-year-old boy who was inviting me. I call that courage. And I said, amen. The mere fact that he took the step of faith, you know, to just message me through Facebook and ask boldly, Pastor, go to our school. Share it to all the students here. That was courage. And everybody said, Amen. Anyway, I was chit chatting with him. I was talking with him and we were planning things out. But the whole week, that was on Thursday, and I finally said, Okay, I'm going to go there Friday. But the Thursday after the post of Kusha, I said, Oh, and I'm going to go there Friday. Jeremy, po, Jer Jeremy, okay, Jeremy, okay. Jeremy, uh, meron bang sound system. Okay, I'm going to go there. Okay, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. I call that courage. Um, ano ba? Aircon ba yan? Uh, close ba yan? Close bed? Basketball court ba yan? Ano ba expect namin? Ah! Meron pong mga, ano, parang tent yung, yung sa his life, yung parang tent. Alam niyo yung kulay blue? Parang ganon. Tapos mo mag-preach kayo sa ilalim ng puno. I call that courage. Yeah. Kaya ba si Remy? Sabi ko, padlock mo na ako yan. Ilolo ko yata ako. Kapuno da. Anyway, he was, he was not shaken, you know. Alagang tuloy-tuloy siya. He was, so confident and he was so courageous. Sabi niya, Pastor, we organized this. Um, Sinuportan ng mga teachers and we want you to come tomorrow. Pagdating namin kahapon, nagpunta kami. Nakit first time ko nakita si Jeremy. Si Jeremy pala nag-aaten ng wildfire. So first time ko siyang talaga nakausap. Naka-shorts lang siya. Naka-rubber shoes, naka-PE t-shirt. Ako ito yung musmus, batang musmus. Alam niyo yung musmus? Yung man. Pastor, pastor, dito po tayo, dito po tayo. Saan so, ba tayo mag-preach? Hindi sa AVR, hindi sa classroom. Pakita namin, guess what? Nandun nga kami sa ilalim ng puno. I call that courage. Amen. Ganyan, ganyan. Kung nasa rin mga tao, alam ba, mag-gather mo buong, buong school. Ilang ba yung studyante dito? 208 po, lahat ng studyante. Okay, kaya mo i-gather? Opo. Umalis ako. Umalis kami. Uminim ako ng mepe namin kasi kasi masakit yung ngipin ko. Tapos uminim ako ng kape. Ikatapos ko balik ko. Kapa, lahat na sudyante nandun nga. Pati wow. teacher nandun. Ang tawag doon, courage. So, we did the Bible Pepe Seminar. And let me tell you, grabe, you could look at the pictures. All of them accepted Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And they surrendered their life to Jesus Christ. Tapos pa, at the end of the day, nang pag-usap kami, sabi ko, what happened? Bakit mo pinapunta dyan? Ano nangyari sa'yo? Kasi pastor, nung minsan nag-share kayo about my campus for Jesus, inoon ko yun, sabi niya, pag-uwi ko ng bahay, di ako makatulog, sabi niya. Inisip ko lang, inisip mga tao sa school namin, kailangan nila si Jesus. Kaya gumawa ako ng paraan. Imagine mo, last year, 2,907. Kung bawat isa sa atin, gagawin nyo, magkakaroon ng burden sa bawat campus. Grabing impact ang mangyayari. Amen? Amen. Magpakalakas ka ng loob. Take a risk for God. Amen! Tapos pa-uwi kami si Christian, kausap ko. Sabi ni Christian sa akin, Dad, na-challenge ako. Bakit? Eh kasi Dad, 22 na ako. Hindi ko pa nagawa sa tanan ng buhay ko. Pero this year, sabi niya sa June, papasok ko nito sa EU. Gagawin ko yun sa EU. Amen! Kung gagawin ginawa na ni Jeremy, nagawa na yan. Amen! Sasamahan ka ni Lord. Amen! This year, we need to be courageous for God! Ano ba sa inyo? Amen! Woo! Tama na yung pagpapakit na Christiano. Tama na yung 
magigaw Christian na Christian ka, pero pagdating mo sa school, uy, Christian ka ba? Nagahatay ka ba doon sa, sa wild fire, yung alive, alive, tapos, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, minsan, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. Amen. Simula na po ang panahon na ipaglalaban natin si Jesus. Amen. Hindi natin ikahilya that we are worshiping a God who is a God. We will be courageous for Him. Amen. And if I say amen, and we will organize, we will do everything we can. If you need to talk to the principal, talk to the principal. Don't worry. God is backing you up. At kung kailangan natin mag-preach sa ilalim ng ilog, sa ilalim ng sapa, para may share si Jesus, gagawin natin yan. We will not stop. Amen. Come on, let's keep that up again. Hallelujah. Amen. Rise up, young people. Rise up. Hindi ako sinetira sa school mo ikaw. It's not an accident that God placed you in that school. It's not an accident that you, you are good looking. It's not an accident that you are an officer in a club or in your class or in the, in the student council. That's not an accident. God placed you in a place of influence because He wants the people there to know that He is alive through your life. Yeah. And that's your vision. That's your purpose. Iba sa inyo, 7 years na college, di ba mga gratis? Alam mo kung bakit? Kasi hindi mo ba ginagawa yung mission mo? Ang mission mo, ishare mo si Jesus sa lahat Sabi mo sa tabi mo, kaya mo yan. Grabe, 15 years old! 15 years old! Amen. Amen. Yung mga taga-STI, kasama pa nila, STI, dama? Kasama pa nila yung black teachers, dalawang teacher, hallelujah. There. Your campus is for Jesus, amen. 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 So we're done. We're done. Finish. Tapos na. We can go home. One more. One more. Can I realize ko? Kapag yung Christiano, ano? I never heard somebody, you know, someone spoke about lizard. Have you ever heard of the story of the lizard? Di ba? One time there was a person who was driving his car. He drives siya ng kotse. At pagkatapos may, 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 UFO, an unidentified flying object falling from the sky. But now, oh, it's a bird. No, it's not a bird. Oh, it's a plane. No, it's a plane. And it's not a plane. It's, it's a, it's a lizard. <laughs> a lizard falling from the sky. Flat, let's flat on the windshield. I have a direction again. Yung, yung lizard, nakadikit na ganun. Tapos, walang movement. Yung mata lang, diba ganun. <laughs> ano yung picture, diba yung lizard? Na? Nakadikit, nakadikit sa windshield. At pagkatapos ang ginawa ng driver para inanatem para mawala yung, yung lizard, binilisa niya. Lumakas yung hangin, ganyan. Pero guess what? Talagang yung mukha ng lizard na gagawin. Pero nakadikit pa rin siya! Ang tawag doon, consistency! Ang tawag doon, courage! Amen! Mayan may ilang minuto lumibas, nagkaroon ng malakas na ulan, malalaking mga pata, splat! Splat! Talagang pinapa doon driver, pila niya, okay, malakas na yung ulan, siguro naman, matitilag na tong lizard na to pag naulanan. Talagang nabasa ng ulan, talagang Pero alam mo ba, nakatikit pa rin siya! Sabi ng driver, finally, the ultimate test, pahantarin ko na yung wiper. Pahantarin yung wiper. Alam niyo, nangyari, yung lizard sumama sa wiper. Pero nakatikit pa rin. Amen. Naniniwala ako tayong mga Kristiyano, dapat kagaya ng lizard. But guess what? Naniniwala din ako yung lizard na yun. Kristiyano yun. Amen. Kasi he held on. He did not give up. He did not quit. He was consistent. He was courageous. Pagpaan mo si Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We are entering a season, a new season in our lives when we will step out of our comfort zones 
and we will no longer give a super excuse filled life, Christian life. Ang gagawin natin kahit ano mangyari, kahit ano hinaharap natin, kahit ano pinagdataan natin, we will choose to honor God no matter what. Yes! Yeah! 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 Okay na, tapos na. So, let me tell you right now, there are benefits. Have I say benefits? There are benefits uh, when it comes to consistency and courage. But you need to be consistent and courageous when it comes to your prayer life, Choosing to say no to sin, consistency in your life group, consistency in being excellent. Pero po benefits yan. The first benefit is this. When you are consistent and when you are courageous, you will see God's mighty hand working for you. Number one benefit. You'll see God's mighty hand working for you. Sino gusto maranasan to? You will see God's mighty hand working for you. Pag tinanong kita, may experience ka ba na masyashare mo na talaga nakita mo kumilis or kaboy mo? Ay, wala po eh. <laughs> Oo, oh, 5 years ka na, 10 years ka na Christian. Naranasan mo na ba? Wala eh. <laughs> eh kasi takot ka eh. Takot kang gumawa ng mga hakbang para kay Lord eh. You are so afraid to take risks for God. Now how about this? Be consistent, be courageous, take a risk for God. And let me tell you, you will see the mighty hand of God working for your favor. Whenever you're consistent, whenever you're faithful, whenever you choose to be courageous and make steps of faith for God, when you choose to get out of the boat, step out of the boat, you will see the mighty hand, the mighty power of God will work in your life. Rabbi, you will be amazed with the greatness of, of God's power in your life. So make steps of faith. Be a life group leader. Pastor, I'm too young. Pastor, I'm afraid. Pastor, I'm scared. Take the step of faith. God will provide you wisdom. God will provide everything that you need to succeed. Make a step of faith. Share Jesus to your classmates. Pastor, I'm afraid they might laugh at me. Make a step of faith. Jesus is backing you up. Never say amen. Amen. Then you'll be amazed how, how powerful and, and how great power of God in your life is. Let's read Daniel, verse 16. It says here, so context, so the, the association, association of the jealous people, OJP, they heard that they, you know, Daniel was still praying. So they brought this to King Darius and here's what happened. Verse 18, verse 16. So King Darius gave the order and Daniel was brought in and thrown into the lion's den. Are you getting this? So Daniel was brought to the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May the God you serve all the time save you. I like this. May the God you serve all the time save you. In fact, this is my prayer for some of you today. Some of you have exams Monday, right? Amen. You have thesis Monday, right? Or next yes, week, final exams, right? And some of your friends, they chose not to be here because they're reviewing. Amen. But some of you still, those of you who chose to be here because you want to honor God. Amen. You're here. How about if I tell you right now, may the God whom we serve and worship and praise all the time save you. Because you chose to be here today, God will save you next week. Amen. Amen. It's an hour. It's an hour. It just came in. It just came so fresh. It's an hour. You receive this right now. Because you keep on honoring God, God will save you. Amen. Those who honor their God, those who honor and praise and worship, those who choose to just love God no matter what, they will receive salvation. They will experience God as their Savior. More and more, more and more, more than ever, more, 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 more than anybody else. More, 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 more. Because they honor God. Can I say amen? Amen. Can I say amen? Amen. It says here, the king said to Daniel, may the God you serve all the time save you. Next line. A big stone was brought and placed over the opening of the lion's den. Then the king used his signet ring and the rings of his royal officers to put special seals on the rock. Next line. This ensured that no one would move the rock and bring Daniel out. Next line. The king, Darius, went back to his palace. He did any entertainment brought to him and he could not sleep. Verse 19, the next morning, King Darius got up at dawn and hurried to the lion's den. Verse 20, as he came near the den, he was worried. He called out to Daniel. Hey, brother. 
The next morning, dun 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 dun. <laughs> King Darius got up, dun 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 dun, and hurried to the lion's den. Dun dun, dun dun, dun dun, dun dun, dun dun. As he came near the den, he was worried. Dun 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 dun. He called out to Daniel. Daniel, <laughs> servant of the living God, as your God that you always worship, been able to save you from the lions? Daniel answered. Pwede na tayo dito, Daniel answered. You know what it means when, when somebody answers, amen? It means he's alive. Mayroon naman ako sumugod, patay na pala. So, the Bible tells us Daniel answered. O King, live forever! My God sent His angel to close the lion's mouth. They have not hurt me because my God knows I am innocent. I never did anything wrong to you, oh King. Come on, give God praise. How many more would like to experience this? Amen. Amen. That God will just enforce it. And ask his angels, sabi nila, Oh, mga anghel, sige na. Pumunta na kayo. Ayusin yung sitwasyon niya. Tulungan niyo siya. Ooh, hallelujah. It happens when you're consistent and courageous. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Grabe. Imagine niyo, no? Nag-exam ka, naghilipa na yung mga anghel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. People who are willing to fight for God experience Him in ways that are amazing. People who are faithfully honoring God experience great miracles. They have great stories of God in their lives. Number two, one, another benefit. When you are consistent and when you are courageous, People will worship God because they saw Him work in you. How many of you will love this anointing right now? Yeah. That whenever people see you, they say, Wow, God is so amazing in your life. I want to praise Him. Yes. You know, somebody comes to you and says, You know what? The truth is, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't really believe in, in the God that you serve. But because I saw Him work in your life, I'm going to worship Him. I'm going to receive Jesus too. I'm going to surrender my life to Jesus too because I want to have what you have. And I'm going to praise like the way you praise. So bring me to the youth game. Bring me to that place called Wildfire and let's worship God together because I saw God work in your life. When you are courageous and consistent, people are just so amazed, are in awe with how God works in your life that they are moved to worship. That even if they don't believe in God so much, but because they saw God work in your life, they are moved to worship. All of a sudden you see the dancing. All of a sudden you see the smiling. They're praising God because they saw God move. <laughs> and about anyway. you gotta understand, you are God's representatives in your schools, in your campuses, in your classrooms. Amen. Amen. And the closest thing to to knowing Jesus that they could ever have is you being there because you are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And whenever they see God at work in your life, whenever they see the power of God working in your life, whenever they see the joy in your heart, whenever they see the the um. The balance in your step, they just say, wow, God is amazing in your life. I love your life because you have God in your life. I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to worship God like you do. I'm going to receive God like you do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose to just honor God like you do because I see Him working at you. I like that. Yeah. The story of Daniel, this is what happened. Verse 23, King Darius was very happy because Daniel was alive and told his servants to lift Daniel out of the lion's den. So they lifted him out and did not find any injury. No injury. Whoa. Who likes that? Yeah. You go through a test, you go through a challenge, no injury. Yeah. Nothing happens to you. Nothing bad happens to you. Because Daniel had trusted in his God. Yeah. Verse 24, Then the king commanded that the men who had accused Daniel be brought to the lion's den. Huh? They, their wives, and their children were thrown into the den. The lions grabbed them before they hit the floor huh, of the den and crushed their bones. Grab it, no? How many of you know that the lions in the den were like fierce? Imagine, can you get the picture? 
So the families of those who got jealous and accused Daniel, they were thrown to the lion's den. The family and, and who else? Who else? The wives, or even the wives, hallelujah. Praise God, I don't have a wife, hallelujah. No, no, no. Why did I say that? Amen. I'm just kidding, amen. Anyway, they, the the wives, and the, and the children were thrown into the den. All right, so you can imagine, the lions grabbed them before they hit the floor of the den. So that's how fierce the lions were. They haven't hit the floor yet, and they were eaten, or they, they ate, or they crushed the bones of the people. You know, like, if it's like in slow motion, it's like they were thrown like... And the enemy said, before they hit the floor, the lions are like... <laughs> That's how fierce they were. Imagine, when Daniel was there, nothing happened to Daniel. Amen. It was because of God. It was because of God. People will worship God because they saw Him in you. People will want to have what you have because your life has fingerprints, has God's fingerprints all over it. One of the best experiences is where people are inspired to follow Christ because of your life. So don't stop honoring God. You are His representative. Number three, benefit. You want more? Oh, this, is, this is the last one. Benefit of being consistent and courageous. You will finish with success. How many more of you would like to finish with success? Amen. And at the end of your life, you're going to be successful. Amen. At the end of every project, you will be successful. Amen. At the end of everything that God wants you to do, you will be successful. Amen. The key is this. You have to be consistent and courageous. Amen. Woo! you got to understand, everybody can start a race. But only a few finish, or only a few will finish it. The consistent and the courageous, they finish well. They finish strong. In Daniel's story, verse 28, the Bible tells us, So Daniel was successful. What's the word? Successful. Yes. During the time of Darius, was king, and with Cyrus, the Persian. God just blessed him. God just anointed him. And he was successful. You know why? Because he was consistent in the Lord. He was courageous in the Lord. Amen. Even, even if he was under a fiery trial, he was consistent in the Lord. He never stopped. Even if he didn't feel like doing it, he still did it. Because he was doing it for God. He understood properly. He understood well that everything that he was doing was for God. And God deserved his best all the time. Even when he did not feel like giving it his best. He gave it his best all the time. Because he knew he was doing it for God. Everybody said amen. amen. Attend your life groups all the time. Don't be absent. You are doing it for God. Come to the gigs. Continue sharing Jesus. Invite your friends. Invite your campuses. Bring them here. Share Jesus with them. Don't stop. Even if they laugh at you. Even if they mock you. It's all good. Because you're doing it for Jesus. Everybody said amen. amen. It's not how good you start. It's how well you finish. When the sizzle fizzles out, that is where commitment, that is where commitment becomes a must. And everybody said amen. I want to end with this phrase. You could take a picture of it so you could retweet it or put it on your Facebook. I want to end with this, powerful. Honoring God is not based on feelings or emotions. And everybody said amen. It is based on a choice that we have to make. Let me say that again. Honoring God is not based on feelings or emotions. It is based on a choice that we have to make. Pastor, I don't feel like worshiping God today. No, no, no. Honoring God is not based on feelings or emotions. It is based on a choice that we have to me. Pastor Roy, I don't feel like being honest today in my exam. I did study last night. I don't want to fail. I don't feel like not cheating today. So I'm going to cheat. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Honoring God is not based on feelings or emotions. It is based on a choice that we have. So last February, and then when 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 September comes or November, it's kind of cold. It's older. 
the, the weight is colder and I feel like so lonely. So I don't feel like honoring God with my commitment. No, 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 no. Remember, honoring God is not based on feelings or emotions. It is based on a choice that we have to make. Pastor Wright, don't feel like attending next Saturday. No, 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 no. It's not about your feelings. It's not about your emotions. It is based on a choice that we have to make. Next Saturday, you will be tempted to lie in bed, to lay in bed all day and embrace your pillow and sleep. You don't feel like praising God. No, 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 no. Honoring God is not based on feelings or emotions. It is based on a choice that we have to make. Let's choose to honor God. Amen. Come on, let's say God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Did you receive it today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands right now. We're going to worship God more. We're going to praise God more. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you.